Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Glory. He's so worthy to be praised and adored. As we continue in our Wednesday night Bible study series, the Divine Portals Gateway to God's Favor. If you would, please go to Proverbs 3 and 6. Proverbs 3 and 6. And as you are stern, you're standing and turning of the reading of the word, I will pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done already, God, how you were able to lift us up this morning and start us on our way, God. We don't take for granted, Lord, the hedge of protection you place upon each and every one of us, our church family, Lord. Let the word go forth tonight. Let it edify. Let it be raiment unto the hearts of the saints, Lord. Let it be a transformation, Lord in the areas in which they need to grow, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our pastor, giving him health and strength, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in his body, his heart, his mind, and soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Divine portals, gateways to God's favor. Tonight's lesson is the acknowledgement portal. The acknowledgement portal. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let me first begin by saying to the aspiring teachers of the word of God, those called to preach the word of God, and all those that are just good old lovers of the word of God, that the Wednesday night Bible study series is handpicked by our pastor to edify the saints. We're going to give some acknowledgement tonight. Every topic has been spiritually crafted to bring forth spiritual knowledge used in order to bring more to and closer to Christ, meaning it ain't something we just, he pulls out the midst of the air. It's not something that it just pops up in his head. It's, it's actual labor of sitting down, thinking, allowing God to use, Lord God, to, to bring forth a spiritual thought in order to bring forth to the people. The topic given is to be the topic taught, not just read, but taught. Tonight's topic is the acknowledgement portal, and it is my job to teach you what to do in order to enter into this portal in order to tap into the favor of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Why is acknowledgement so important? By acknowledging and appreciating others, we help to enhance the relationships and continue interacting with them. This makes acknowledging God that more important. Who else would you enhance your relationship with more than God? Who else do you want to be able to form a bond with other than God? Who else do you want to be stronger to be able to communicate and receive communication from and then God? That's why acknowledgement is so important. One of the highest form of disrespect is not to acknowledge someone. When a person is not worthy of your acknowledgement, it sends a message that they're not worthy of your recognition. How can we ever just pass by a day and not acknowledge God? How can we get up in the morning and not acknowledge God has already raised us up? How can you use the activity of your limbs and not acknowledge God? This is why the devil hates to be ignored. He gets louder when he feels like no one's listening. He, he, he causes disturbances when he feels like nobody's watching. He, he threatens. He causes distraction and contentions because he is everything that's opposite of that of God. Because God loves our acknowledgement of him and he wants to be acknowledged. But when we walk and ignore the enemy, it just fuels fire in him, fire in him. James 4 and 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. Every time we go and see an enemy and we ignore that enemy, we place him on a situation where he has to flee. Every time that the enemy comes up against us, anything that may come beside the will of God, if we ignore it, move Move on from it. Don't acknowledge it. It has to flee. We give too much credence to the enemy. We give too much time to foolishness. We give too much time to things that's not going to edify. That's why we got to learn to make sure he learns to flee. If the lack of acknowledgement makes the devil flee, we know that God is everything opposite of the devil. Therefore, acknowledging God can do nothing but draw him near to us. It opens the portal to his favor. It directs our path to him. The the very act of acknowledgement is defined as the recognition of the importance or quality of something or someone else. 
if I acknowledge God, it says I recognize his quality. Quality. I recognize who he is. I recognize the power in which he has. If I acknowledge God, it lets me sit here, let people understand, let him know that he's worthy of my time. He's worthy of my thought. He's worthy of me going and reaching out to him. What can be more important than God? Without him, there is nothing else to focus on. He is the reason we have the other nouns in our lives, the other person, places, or things in our lives. He is the reason for everything that we think on, that we have before us. Why am I worried about my car if I not even acknowledge God? I can't even acknowledge or think about my child. Why? Because God comes even before my child. Why is it that I'm worried about my job? Why am I worried about what my boss may be saying and I haven't acknowledged God? Because why? My God is so much more important than my, my job. I don't care what they're doing out in the street. I don't care what the news is saying. If I ain't acknowledge God, what does it mean to anything? If I'm looking at anything outside of the will of God, you got to know who your God is and what your God expects of you. We trying to acknowledge him tonight, knowing that acknowledging God will only bring us close to his portal. Once we walk through the portal, we get closer to his favor. That's why we want to acknowledge God in everything we say and do. How can we acknowledge God? without the, knowing the many facets of him. See, the problem is we throw the word out God so much and we forget that God has many names. We already know that he's Jehovah Jireh, that he is our provider, but we forget to say that sometimes, so we just say God and make it mundane. I'm here to tell you there's nothing um, happenstance or common or just a regular run of the mill day about the word of God, about the name of God. Remember, he is El Shaddai. He is our almighty. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the healer of our body. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the reason for our peace. He is Emmanuel and he is with us. If we start seeing him for all of his many names and all of his many facets and all the ways and he's with us, then it's easier to acknowledge him. See, I may not forget. I may not remember Remember that I'm walking with God, but when I know that I'm walking with Emmanuel in my heart, that means he's sitting within me, even if I don't see him around me, even if he's not standing before me, I'm walking with that of God, even though I may have sickness in my body, I got to know for a fact that he is Jehovah Rapha, that means he is the healer, so even though my throat may be hurting, maybe I'm having a fever right now, but because he's Jehovah Rapha, he is my healer, so therefore why am I worried, I don't worry about no sickness, let it come on up against me. I'm walking with Jehovah Rapha right on the inside of me. I don't have to worry about what the naysayers say, talking all what they're going to talk about me. I know that he is who he is. I know that he's Jehovah Shalom. I know he is my peace. So if he is my peace, why am I worried about what somebody's saying? Why am I worried about what thoughts of people thinking? Why am I worried about what they're coming up against me with? I am walking with that of my God. You can't tap the portal of acknowledgement without first acknowledging who he is. The problem is we're not acknowledging his whole self, the all-encompassing of that of God. We're just saying God this and God that. You best to understand that God is in your beginning and your end. He is your alpha and your omega. He is the start of your day and the end of your day. He is the breath that came through your body. He is your bright and morning star. He is everything that it is that you are and everything that you want to be. We can't minimize that of God. I honestly think that church folks are the worst at it. Simply because we throw out the word God and don't really realize who God is. Because if we knew who he really was, we wouldn't be doing some of the things that we're doing. If we know what, who he really was, we acknowledge him in our every move of the day. God is worthy to be acknowledged. In the book of John, we know the story of when Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and he fed the 5,000. Humanly impossible to do by a mortal man. But is there anything too hard for God? John 6 and 11, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Now, I may have never eaten two fish or five loaves of bread, but I remember a time when it didn't look like I had enough. I remember a time that my two nickels didn't rub together to make what it was supposed to be making. 
I remember a time when my gas tank was on E, but I was able to get there and get back. I may not eat no two fish. I may not eat no five loaves of bread, but I do remember a time when I ain't have enough. When it wasn't looking like that I should be able to do anything, that I wasn't able to feed my child, that I wasn't able to feed myself. I do remember a time when the MLGW should have been cut off. I do remember a time when I didn't have enough. Then I find out I found that 50 in my pocket or that, that $20 here and there. I do remember a time. I don't know about you, but I ain't always had it right. I got it now. I ain't always had it like I am right now. I ain't always been like I am right now. That's why I got to acknowledge God because without him, where would I be? He was the one that made me the ends meet that shouldn't even been touching together. You better acknowledge God today. God wants us to acknowledge that time in our hearts and through our praise. We acknowledge God through our praise. We say his name and we say, ooh, you know how we do that little Holy Ghost wave. You know, ooh, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, thank you, God. We do it. We clap our hands and hold our hands up like we worshiping. No, you got your hand up in the air, but I want to see some praise out your lips. I want to see you holler out your belly, out the bowels of your belly when you remember when. When you remember when it was nobody but you. When they couldn't call nobody. When your cell phone was cut off. Ah! When there wasn't nobody turning no cell phone bills on. You ain't had nobody to call. You ain't had nobody to help you. You were just sitting there when you grab hold of your child and put them in the bed with you. Just so you can have somebody next to you. I said give God some praise tonight. We acknowledge him in our praise. We acknowledge him in our memory. We acknowledge him in the fact uh, that we don't want to ever forget where we once we came. Everybody ain't been no thief and no robber. Everybody ain't been no uh, sucker girl that's trying to get in and get in that. Some of us had to go through hard work, determination, and a whole lot of prayer. And look where he's brought us from. Uh, look what he's doing in our lives. Uh, we need to give him a little bit of praise. Uh, we acknowledge God through our praise. I ain't saying call just his name. I call give him a hand clap. I call give him them a shabak. I call dropping down on my knees. I call just groaning up and down the aisles. Give God some praise. That's how we acknowledge him. Give him some praise. I promise you, you'll feel better on the inside. I promise you, your heart will start pumping the right way. I promise you, your feet won't hurt no more. Give God some praise. us when we say thank you Jesus when we say thank you for his son he smiles at us when we recognize the Holy Spirit has led God and directed us not for what I have right now not for what I have coming to me but for where I used to be and how it brought me out some of y'all ain't been through nothing I'm sorry excuse me while I acknowledge him in my praise some of y'all ain't been through nothing. My daughter went a couple, a couple of years ago was talking to Pastor Kiner and I. She was like, all that I've been through with. Me and Pastor Kiner looking at each other like, what she been through? Like, we, we don't know. As I know, she ain't had three square meals. She, she got a car. She got a what? What she been through? It ain't for me to know. She said she been through some stuff. So therefore, she wants to give God some praise. I don't know what everybody going through. Be honest, I don't want to know what you're going through. But I want to see that you're giving God the praise. Because if I look at you, you're looking good tonight. When I look at you, you look like you're breathing out of your body. When I look at you, you look like you ate something today. Romans 12 and 12. Rejoicing in hope, patience, and tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. You see, you got to know who you are. The situations in the body, in the Bible, are showing us not only just the stories or the parables, but it shows us how we can be, how we can get through. He's given us examples. There's nothing that you've gone through that's not in the word of God. 
There's nothing that has happened that you're going through right now that's not in the word of God. That's why knowing the word for yourself is what keeps him on the inside of you and gives you an opportunity to continuously acknowledge him. See, I've been like Joseph. I've been too lied on by a hateful person, thrown in a jail cell off of the lie that a joker told about you. Anybody been lied on? Everybody been disrespected? Anybody been told or something wasn't true about them and had the people that you love believe in the lie? The fool was the foolish, the fool was fooled by the foolishness of the lie. And you felt like you were just caught, maybe not in a jail cell, but you were locked in this situation, knowing that they lied, knowing that they didn't convince from folks, knowing and you saying, you know this person's a liar. How you gonna remember? How you gonna listen to them and not me? You know the history. But the enemy can trick anybody. The enemy can put a blind over anybody's eyes. But God expects us not just to wallow in our mess. God expects us not to just sit there and cry about it. He said, be patient. Be patient in God. Because God said he will fight our battles. Exodus 14 and 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he has show, you, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, y'all see them again no more forever. Yeah, that joker got, rid, got away with that lie that time. But within time come, and one thing about the enemy, they can't stay hidden for too long. And then once people start saying, whoa, that joker must have been lying. Oh, I don't see that same spirit what you trying to say that they did. Oh, you talking about Sister Adams. Uh, you said Kim did this. Uh, you said, whoa, whoa, life is showing me something different. That's why all you got to do is wait. You will not see the Egyptian no more. The Bible tells us that God will make our enemies our footstools. That's why all you got to do is stand on their head and, and look at them crazy. And I, how you thought it was going to destroy me? I, how you thought it was going to kill relationships? And how you thought I wasn't going to come back? No, you just made me come back stronger, wiser, harder, just because you tried me. If you knew me, baby, you wouldn't try to do me. I ain't new to this. I grew to this. I, I came into this thing with power. God just resurrected the power on the inside of me. Come on now. It's because God is a God of patience. We can endure accusations of men, the lies and tricks of the enemy, the innuendos of Satan, and he tries to destroy relationships. You can come out on top every time. One of the easiest ways to receive God's favor is through this acknowledgement portal. The easiest out of all of them. Because all it is is acknowledging God. How hard can that be? All you got to do is acknowledge him. And when you acknowledge him, that smile draws you closer to his favor. He tells us in our praise and he tells us in his word what he expects to see in us to prove that we give him, give reverence to him. Micah 6 and 8. He has showed thee, O oh man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. God expects three things from us. Number one is justice. To act justly is to treat people fairly and respectfully. That's why it's so ugly when a, a child of God disrespects another child of God. Because it's so outside of the will of God and he expects us to be just. Every, God don't never tell us about being fair, but God is always just. You don't be disrespectful. You don't call out people out of who they are. You don't, you don't bring them into a situation where you're being disrespectful. That is outside of the will of God. Secondly, God expects our kindness when it says to be merciful. We are all ex somethings. All have the propensity to make a mistake. Everyone in here is an ex-something. You may not be an ex-drug addict. You might not be an ex-alcoholic. You might not be an ex-whoremonger, but you are an ex-something. Something that you don't do now that you used to do back then. Something that you don't do now 
is now your ex something. When you activate a spirit of mercy and kindness, you acknowledge God because you are walking in his spirit and in his will. It was his mercy that placed his son on the cross because he had mercy for us. He gave his only begotten son. How can we? Now, ain't none of y'all giving up y'all kids for me. Ain't none of y'all giving up y'all children, y'all grandchildren. Y'all ain't giving up y'all mamas, daddies, uncles. If God is giving up his only son, surely we can be merciful. Surely we can be kind to one another. Surely we can turn the other cheek. When the Bible tells us to turn it, that a just man turns his cheek seven times 70, you got to know surely we can extend a spirit of kindness. Thirdly, he expects us to be humble, to walk with humility, recognizing and accepting our total dependence on God. It ain't you, boo. Your good looks, your fancy clothes, the anointing that you have on your body, it ain't you, boo. That's why you got to work with a spirit of humility because the good Lord giveth and the good Lord can take it away. I don't ever want to be so hearty thinking I'm so arrogant. I, I got it going on one day that God stripped me from whatever anointing that he's given me. I don't want to be so holier than thou and looking down on the other people and ooh, walking around with my nose up in the air. And I can't remember that my humility is what allowed God to use me. If I wasn't humble, he wouldn't have put an ounce of his anointing in my heart. He wouldn't have put an ounce of his anointing in my spirit. It ain't me, it's God. And we acknowledge him by every time we walk humbly, every time we give him the glory and honor, every time we thank him for giving us an opportunity. We got to know who God is. He wants us to acknowledge him in everything we do. We got to believe we have something. We can't just believe we have something special and not realize that we're working with a borrowed anointing. We are borrowing it from God. Ain't nobody just born all just anointed. If that's the case, you coming out the womb, just preaching and teaching the word, just hallelujah. Why are you getting spanked on the tail? You grew up into this. You learned you God, God anointed you for this. That's when we acknowledge God. You have to walk in all these three in order to begin to acknowledge God. If you don't, don't expect to walk through his acknowledgement portal. Because if you're not acknowledging him, why would he open up that portal for you? You see, people don't realize you can still gain God's favor without going through this portal. But I want to get his favor in as many ways as I can. There's a lot of ways to get God's favor. But one thing about this series, series is offering you different ways to get there. You know what I mean? Sometimes I may mess up on the acknowledgement portal. But I know that I can get in there through the fasting portal. Maybe I can get in there through the um, um, whichever other portal. You know, my mind is blank. I'm getting old. All the other portals. You have to walk through each one of these portals. If you got 50 ways to get in, why won't you take the 50 ways to get in? If I'm giving you another acknowledgement portal to get in there, now you can go through the acknowledgement door. Or next time you may have to go through the window. I can go through the window because I got other portals that I can get me in. You got to see that one portal is just that one. The series is equipping you with different ways to get to God's favor. He's not giving you just one way to get there. He's not giving you just one way to have favor. He's not just giving you one opportunity because he knows that we are all nothing but sinners saved by grace. We all make mistakes. We may mess up on one. So he's giving us multiple ways to reach his favor. It is his favor that I'm praying for. It's his favor that I want over my life. It's his favor that I want to see. The door may be locked, but I want the key to get in through the back door. That's what these different portals offer you, different keys in order to walk through the portal of God's favor. You got to arm your body with these portals. God is not asking for much. He really isn't. He only wants us to be Christians. There are three C's that he expects us to acknowledge him. One, he expects us to acknowledge Christ. He is the Lord and Savior. If you're saved, act like this is a second chance and not something owed to you, but grace given to you. Because Christ has come, he's given us all a second chance. I have messed up before and I should not have gotten a second chance. 
but God has offered that to me. I've messed up in time in my job. When I was first being an assistant principal, I locked all the kids in the gym. That's a mistake. Don't do that. But I was thankful for the principal who promoted me, who I wasn't even the AP yet. I was trying to be that. I was thankful that he gave me a second chance. Had he not given me a second chance, that would have turned the tra trajectory of my career the other way. How many things has God given you a second chance for? When the bullet should have hit you and it didn't. When a disease should have got you but you didn't catch it. When the condom broke and you got messed up by that, you should have known that was a second chance. When you were out in them streets and you should have been in the house, God gave you a second chance. When you were lying on folks and they didn't come back and shoot you, God gave you a second chance. You got to understand that God gives us second chances, and that's what Christ proves to us, that he is a God of a second chance. If you acknowledge Christ, you acknowledge the second chance. The second C is the cross. Acknowledging that Christ hung on the cross to cleanse us from our sins. That means don't pick them back up and wallow in them again. Get out of the dirt. The fact that he put his son on the cross means that we know he knew that we were nothing but sinners. The fact that he stood on that cross and he took the beating in which he did, and the fact that he stood there and hung, bled, and died, that gave us a chance to say that I can put sin away. I don't have to worry about the sin that I was in. I don't have to do that sin again. The cross lets us know that we got a second chance. That's a reason to acknowledge him. The cross lets us know that the sin that we once were in, we don't have to go back in it again. Thirdly, God gave us the church. It is through the church that he is the, the, it is through the church that is the only body connected to Christ. That is why we are called the body of Christ. Because that shows our connection to Christ. So when you don't come to church, you lose your connection with Christ. That's why you come into the doors to stay connected with Christ. So therefore you can continue to walk in the will of God. I know they say that you can have church at the house, and I know they say that you can praise at home, but the Bible tells us that we are not to forsake the assembly of each other, that we should be one with another. It's hard for me to get next to another woman of God or another woman, man of God, and knowing that iron sharpeneth iron if I never see you. Those hug three people when we say that and hug your neighbor and give your neighbor a hand clap of praise and give your neighbor a high five. We do that for a reason. It's not just we just saying it. Don't let the cliches of the world mess your head up. God got a plan. He wants you to touch and agree with a person just like you, a spirit of God that's just like you. He wants you to touch and agree, hug somebody that's anointed too, hug somebody that loves God just like you. Hug somebody that knows the word like you. He wants you to be able to be around people that want to love on God and not love anybody else for different reasons. He wants that for us. That's why the church is so important. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God and the Father by him. God wants us to acknowledge him in all our ways. Not just for a season. But in season and out of season, we acknowledge him in our praise, we acknowledge him through the word, and we acknowledge him in our works. Yeah, you got to do some work. Too often we have a pay my dues mentality. We get to a point that we stop doing what it took to get us to where we are right now. You can't forget how you started and what it took to move you to the next level. I used to do this, or I used to do that. Just think if God said, I used to bless you. I used to see you working, so therefore I bless you. I don't see you no more, so I'm just going to stop blessing you because you don't stop working. Ministry is not for accolades. It's not for boasting. It's not for brownie points. It's a service to God. 
We acknowledge him by trying to repay him for a debt that we can never pay. You can never pay God for what he's done for you already. If he don't do anything else, look what he has done already. Look how he saved you already. How many has been on a sick bed and got up? That's no, you can't repay God for that. How many of us have already been in situations we shouldn't have made it to our 10th birthday, no less our 20th, 30th, 40th, and 50th birthday? You can't repay God. The debt we owe God is insurmountable. Die, Biden can't get us out of this debt. Matthew 6 and 2, therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. We can't walk around trying to tell everybody, I do this, I do that, I do this. Who you telling? God know what you do. I'm not big on the behind the scenes ministry. Simply because truly behind the scenes has an outward manifestation. If we're doing something behind the scenes, it's going to show openly. We're going to see something. I don't have to, to announce that I pay all the, write out all the bills and pay and manage the bills in this church. You see the lights on, don't you? You see the air on, don't you? That means somebody paying them bills. I don't have to announce that I handle the supplies of the church. You know you wipe your hands on some paper towels today. I ain't got to make an announcement. Sister Keisha don't have to tell us that she runs a health care company. Why? Because them jokers getting paid on a regular basis. There's CNAs that's going out throughout the city. Sister Natalia, Minister Emma don't have to tell us that they clean the church. You come in here and it's clean, don't you? Pastor Connor don't have to tell us that he's praying behind our backs. Why? Because you prayed for, you got up, you got a resurrection, you got your hands over you. You know that somebody is pushing you when you can't push no more. It's the prayers of the man of God that got you there. He ain't got to come and tell you that I prayed for you yesterday. I'm praying for you tomorrow. I'm going to pray for you. You got to know what you know that you know that whatever needs to be done, God is providing. The man of God is praying because that's who the man of God is. He ain't got to make an announcement to you that he prayed for you. That's why the behind the scene ministry can have a tendency to be bogus. Because they say, I did it by behind the scenes. Well, what's the manifestation of what happens behind the scenes? Because stuff was messed up before and it's messed up then. So what did you do behind the scenes? Don't get caught up by the tricks of the enemy. God wants us to acknowledge him, not ourselves. He don't want us to tell people what we've done and who we are and what our position is. He wants us to acknowledge him, not we ourselves. It is only in the acknowledgement of God that will get us through the portal. It is the giving him his praise, leaning and learn, leaning, learning and living his word and giving an outstanding performance in our works that really takes us to the next level. When you acknowledge God, you give God the opportunity to pour out even more on you. It's easy to bless someone that gives you a hug. It's easy to bless someone that tells them that they love you. It's easy to bless someone that you see laboring before people. It's easy to bless someone that's walking in his will. It's hard to bless someone you don't see. It's hard to bless people that you don't know. It's hard to bless people that don't talk to God. It's hard to bless folks that don't give him a time of day. It is up to us to acknowledge him in all our ways and all of our paths. It is up to us to acknowledge God in everything we do. You wouldn't have what you have without God. You wouldn't be who you are without God. You ain't do what you do without God. Come on and stand up and give him praise. Give him praise today. Just for being able to stand on your two feet. That's worth acknowledging God. Come on and acknowledge him in this place. Acknowledging him will open up the door. Jesus came 42 generations with the key to the acknowledgement portal. <laughs>